Okay, so you've watched a video about the basics of the cell membrane, and the instructor for that video talked about some integral proteins and peripheral proteins. I want to spend a little more time talking about specific examples of proteins that you find in the cell membrane. So if you'll look at my diagram that I already have laid out here, you'll see the terms extracellular and intracellular. And let me show you what I mean by these. Intracellular is what's found inside the cell, and extracellular will be anything found outside the cell, an extracellular matrix. And that's all I want to talk say about those particular terms at this time. I'd like to start off by adding a protein into our membrane. This is called a channel protein. Channel proteins allow ions and molecules to pass through from the extracellular portion to the intracellular, or intracellular to the extracellular. Now, these molecules will be moving down the concentration gradient. Uh, before you start pulling your hair out, we will talk about concentration gradients a lot in our next little unit. Um, but a concentration gradient basically means going from where it's most crowded to least crowded for a specific molecule or ion. Like the hydrogens here, there was more hydrogen on the outside or in the extracellular space. And so hydrogen can move down the concentration gradient to where it was less crowded into the intracellular space. And this is done using a channel protein. Another kind of protein I want you to be familiar with is called a cell recognition protein. Now, a cell recognition protein is one that allows the cell to be recognized as a part of the self or is not foreign. This is what makes sure that your body knows, hey, wait, this is a part of me, don't attack it. So if you had to get an organ transplant, this protein would probably not match or would not match if you got a new organ from someone else. It, has a, it is a glycoprotein. And that means there's a carbon chain attached to it. So if you look there at the top in the blue, I've drawn the carbon chain. And this is unique to each individual. Again, these are cell recognition proteins. They help other cells in your body recognize the cell as being a part of itself or a part of your body. And here is that unique carbohydrate chain that is unique to each individual. Now, we will also have another protein, I'm sort of backtracking a little bit, that allows us to move molecules or ions into a cell or out of a cell as needed. This protein is called a carrier protein, and if you'll notice, it has a different shape than your channel protein does. And I'm going to actually draw it down here to make this a little bit simpler. So if we have our bilayer here, you will see through our bilayer I am drawing a protein, and that protein has a little dip there at the top. That is a site that can receive an ion or a molecule. Once it picks up a specific one that it is designed for, these are very specific proteins, it can then pull that molecular ion into itself. The, in the protein actually changes shapes. And then once it moves through the membrane, it then releases that ion or molecule on the other side of the cell membrane. This allows for things that have a charge that could otherwise not pass through to move through the membrane, like a channel protein does. The difference is these are very specific, unlike a channel protein, and they can move things with or against their concentration gradient, so from crowded to less crowded or from less crowded to more crowded, and you'll learn more about these later. Another protein that I want to mention is the receptor protein. Now, receptor proteins, like carrier proteins, are very specific. They are targeting specific molecules. However, they are not just looking for these molecules to bring them into the cell, although they sometimes function to help with that. These receptor proteins really are looking for a signal. They're watching for a signal in the form of a molecule to tell a cell to perform a specific function. So when a receptor protein finds what it's looking for and binds to it, it will signal for the cell to perform a specific action. Now another type of protein I want to talk about is the junction protein. I'm drawing one in here in this plasma membrane, but I'd also like to draw it um, showing really what its function does. It's sort of hard to see here. 
So I'm going to draw this junction protein down here. We have a phospholipid bilayer here, another one there. These are two separate cells. On either side of these membranes, you have intracellular regions, and in the middle, you have the extracellular region. Remember, this is two different cells. This is the space in between them. And a junction protein, as you might guess, connects these two cells. And it's sort of like a channel protein, but it connects to a secondary one that is in another cell, that's embedded in another cell membrane. What this allows is for a signal to pass from one cell directly to another. So this is how like your muscle cells can all contract simultaneously, is these junction cells allow them to pass a signal from one cell to the next and allow cells to communicate within each other and they also help us hold cells together and bind them. So these are very important for cellular communication. The last type of protein I want to mention is the enzyme, it last protein as far as your membrane is concerned. Enzymes may be embedded directly in the cell membrane. We will spend a lot of time discussing enzymes later, but again, they are uh, just briefly, these are a specific enzyme that allows reactions to occur at a rate that is usable by living organisms. Um, and that will make a lot more sense to you after your next unit. So let me just go ahead and summarize things down a little bit. I want to sort of draw this to a conclusion. If you'll take a look here, I've got a final chart. Cellular protein functions. You have the six different types of cellular proteins I mentioned in this video, and I mentioned them all very briefly. You have channel proteins. These are not specific. They don't change shape. They allow ions or molecules to go down their concentration gradient, entering or leaving a cell. You also have carrier proteins. These are specific. They do change shape. And they can allow ions or molecules to move up or down their concentration gradient. So both channel and carrier proteins provide the function of moving materials into and out of the cell. The difference is the carrier proteins are more specific, they change their shape, and they have the ability to actually move material against the concentration gradient or from an area where it's not very crowded into a very crowded area. And this like I said, will make a little more sense later on. Just keep it in mind for now. There are also cell recognition proteins in your cell membrane. These help cells differentiate which cells belong within the organism and which ones are foreign. This is so important for your immune system so it can recognize the cells, wait a minute, this is invasive, it's a bacteria, it's a cell from somewhere else, we need to destroy it. This is why if you have an organ transplant, your body will attack that new organ because the cell recognition proteins in the cell's membranes of that organ don't match yours. So your body sees it as an invader and will attack it. We also have receptor proteins. These, like carrier proteins, are very specific. They're looking for a specific signal to trigger a reaction in the cell. You'll hear more about, about these a little bit later. There are also junction proteins. These connect cells and allow signals to pass between cells. And finally, cell membranes may contain enzymes. Enzymes facilitate chemical reactions, and trust me, don't worry about the word enzyme too much right now, except for to know that it's a protein and you may find it in a cell membrane. You will be learning all about enzymes, I assure you. That pretty much wraps it up with the cellular proteins I want you to know and the details that I want you to be familiar with. If you have any questions, please, as always, don't hesitate to contact me. Have a nice day.